Hey guys, TJ Schwartz here. Welcome to the shop and welcome back to the channel. Many of you guys know I'm a knife maker, but today it isn't about the knives themselves. Today's about some workflow improvement, particularly improving my 1100MX and the overall way that I have the probe set up. So I'm gonna walk you through the problem I'm having and I'm gonna show you exactly how I'm gonna fix it. First, I wanted to give you a sneak peek of the knives I'm putting together. Looking pretty good, I'm excited. The Overland model, these will be available pretty soon. So here's my Tormach 1100MX. It's a pretty good size machine if you're kind of like uh, not really familiar with CNC machines because most of them are way bigger than this. This is a pretty small guy actually. And so it actually, it, it's great, but it doesn't have all the peripherals for like great efficiency in certain ways. The, the actual like kind of meat and potatoes of the functioning machine is, is super efficient. But things like, for example, the probe, it's got a wire as opposed to being wireless. Now, it doesn't seem like too big of a deal and it really isn't. It saves a, an absolute fortune on the price of the probe. But because of the wire, it's a little bit of a fight sometimes to get it plugged in and then put it in the spindle and use it as opposed to a wireless one you could store in the actual inner, you know, the tool, automatic tool changer there. But because this thing has a wire, it has to be stored somewhere where hopefully it can remain plugged in and just be super accessible. So far, I've actually had to leave it in my tool rack and it's the only safe place I've had to put it, meaning I have to unplug it every time. And you can see hanging right there is where I plug it in. That's an extension cord that brings the, the port that it plugs into all the way up here. Now, that being said, I'm gonna tell you what I kind of plan to do. So right here on the side of the machine, if this thing was mounted so that the cord was plugged in down there and maybe there was a hook to kind of help with cable management, then when I go to put the probe in and use it, which again, if you're a machinist, you know, it's like, it's kind of intermittent. So uh, the fact that it's corded really isn't too big of a drawback as long as it's stored in a kind of proper and available way. Uh, but if I were able to attach it right here somehow, then I'd be super happy. I could just grab it. I could leave it plugged in and be way more efficient than what I do now. A uh, little side note, T5 Manufacturing made this. It's a magnetic index card holder. So I load that thing up with like a handful of index cards. If I want to make an adjustment to a code, I can write it on there, take it into the computer, throw the card away, and be on to the next one. Pretty cool, pretty cool thing. Check them out on Instagram. But uh, that being said, I'm going to jump on the computer and I'm going to show you the design I kind of have in mind for bolting this on here. It's going to be a 3D printed part. Someone might say like, oh, you got a CNC machine, CNC that part and, you know, all that good stuff, build aluminum and whatever. But a big chunk of billet aluminum, big enough to sit on the front of that machine and hold this part would be very spendy and if it was wrong then it would be another piece of aluminum the uh, the idea of rapid prototyping and uh, 3d printing is just great honestly it's perfect solution for this problem so that's where i'm going to start and maybe someday i'll cnc one but probably not for now so i'm here at my computer and i'm on the program fusion 360 which i've been using a lot lately and i've downloaded a bt30 just taper side of a tool holder it's really all I need. I don't have the probe, probe up above it, uh, but that doesn't matter because it's just going to be up in the air. Now, there's a few things I need to know here. I need to have this thing dialed in to where I'm going to have clearance and everything. And this is the true dimension of the tool holder I have in front of me that's holding this probe. I have double checked it. And this angle is one that I do need to figure out. So this is representing the angle of the front face of that machine because it is sloped. I'm going to go grab that real quick and then bring it in here and type it in. Guys, I really like these things. I use them a lot. It's just an angle finder with a magnet on the bottom. So turn it on. To zero it, I mean, I'm going to trust that my machine and the way I leveled it is about the most level surface in the shop. So I'll throw it on there, zero it. So this is the zero horizontal plane. And if I stick it on here, Right there, we're getting 80, 80 degrees. So I'm assuming that was the way it was designed. Looks great. So I'll go ahead and apply that. So I've got the angle put in here at 80 degrees in this 2D sketch. As you can see, I did a cross section of this BT30 tool holder. It makes it a lot easier to do this. And I've actually kind of progressed through and finished the design up. I'm going to just walk you through step by step how it's done. First off, this is the finished look that I'm going for. As you can see the cross section here and you can see how it would fit in the holder. Now I'm going to rewind in the timeline here. 
and show you how this works. So I first extruded that original 2D sketch I showed you. I then did a revolve cut to take the taper out of the middle where the actual holder is, did a fillet, and then over here I did another revolve cut to clean up this because I actually wanted the taper to be revealed on the outside of the holder. I then did an extrude cut all the way back so that as you can see the taper carries all the way back for a nice finished look. Some more filleting on the corners here. An extrude cut for the bolt holes. These are quarter inch holes. I'm going to do quarter 28 screws. They're pretty much machine screws. I actually bought them first and made sure that I dimensioned them for this model. Just a, a few more chamfers there. Then the counter bore for the actual uh, screws. I did a little chamfer that leads out of there. I think it looks kind of nice. And then I went through and did a whole bunch of fillets to actually round everything out. Now what you're going to notice is this is only half the tool holder. When I'm doing something that I know is symmetrical, I can guarantee you the best way to do it is to do half of it and then mirror it. That ensures perfect symmetricality, but it also makes quite a bit less work. So finally it's mirrored and there is the finished part. Now I've decided not to apply a hook to the side of this. I'm going to run it like this and let the cable hang straight down. I'm hoping it's just going to be out of the way. The beauty of 3D printing is if it is in the way, I can add a hook somehow on the side of this. For now, I just like the clean look and I'm going to give it a shot. And for now, uh, it's time to export this as an STL and I'm going to print it. So I'll actually show you a little bit of that process, although there's a lot of videos out there on how to do that. So here I have the part in Prusa Slicer. I have a Prusa i3 Mark III and it's a really good machine. I'm in love with it. And the slicer they have that they uh, just kind of integrate with the whole system is just great. This program right here kind of simulates how this is going to go. So I've already done the layer height. I've already made the adjustments. As you can see, the green portions are portions that are going to be removed later. Because as this prints layer by layer, it's going to get to where it's trying to go over this arch. And there will be nothing to hold up the printed layers. And usually it's not a huge problem in a gradual arch, but as it gets towards the top, that's where you're going to get some failures. And so that's where these supports come in. And the way they're designed is they peel off. So with any luck, they'll peel off really easily. Worst case scenario, you kind of have to scrape them off. But I think it's going to work great. Overall, this looks nice. Having the, the large flat surface down here is great for bed adhesion. So I think this is going to be a successful print. I'll go ahead and start it. So I'm about to start this print, just a couple things left to do. As you can see, I'm actually running a program that controls the printer from the computer. It's called Pronterface. I really like it. It gives me more control over the printer. As you can see, I've got readouts for the temperature of the bed and the nozzle and whatnot. Overall, it's just a better system than moving an SD card over to the printer and whatnot. I've got a brand new roll of filament up top. One last thing that I do recommend when you're 3D printing is a water-soluble glue. I go ahead and I put it on the bed where the print's going to be. And this just severely limits the odds of having a failed print because most failed prints are a result of poor adhesion to the bed. So if you've designed your part right and you've sliced it right and then you use glue, almost never do I have a failed print. So this printer is really reliable. I've had it for years now and honestly haven't done any maintenance. It's just a good system. So I come over to my computer here, I click print and off she goes. It's going to do a few different system checks and making sure the temperature's right and then it's going to start. Guys, so that 3D print's running in there. I just had a huge breakthrough and not in a good way. So I'm going to have to probably reprint that. I'm going to have to make some changes. I'm going to show you why. As you can see, when this door sweeps across here into the open position, it goes behind this panel. Now, duh, obviously bolts can't stick through too far or they'll hit the glass. That's super clear to me. I mean, I did notice that when I was kind of coming up with the idea. And I looked, I'm like, man, that's, that's pretty good. That's plenty of room for a bolt, right? What I didn't fully notice is inside of here, the flange, well, there's a flange on the inside that bends in, but there's also a flange that goes the opposite direction. And it actually goes basically the whole way up to this front face. <laughs> And so anything sticking out like a bolt or a nut through this panel would be caught by that piece of metal. Now I could modify the door so it clears them or something crazy like that, but I really don't want to. 
All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the holes and I'm gonna make the actual pad that kind of sticks to the wall bigger. And I am gonna rely on a, uh, a piece of VHB tape, double-sided tape. I'm gonna, I have some really good expensive, you know, 3M stuff that I'm gonna just have to trust. Now that being said, what I'm gonna do is this really heavy guy, this is like a, a face mill, just like tool holder. It doesn't have the mill on it, but this is heavier than the probe. I'm gonna actually stick this thing on here once I get it changed and finished and printed and all that. I'm gonna put this in it and this is heavier, like I said, and I'm gonna leave it maybe for a few days, let the, the whole room kind of thermal cycle. It is summer. If it's gonna fall off, it's gonna be right away. Uh, the way VHB tends to work is like after it kind of cures and ages and whatnot, like it almost sticks on better and better over time. So for that stuff to fail, it really is gonna happen quickly and almost right away. So I kind of feel okay about this. Um, it might be a cleaner look. It might be better not to drill holes in the machine. So I'm gonna show you quick the, the little changes I made. I'm gonna reprint it. Again, this is why 3D printing is so advantageous. I mean, I'm not out really anything, uh, just half of a print, which is, you know, a penny worth of filament. So here we go. So guys, this is what I did. As you can see, I made it taller. It's pretty skinny, it's low profile. In a weird way, it almost looks cleaner. I, it looks nice. So if the VHB is reliable and it holds that other shell mill holder and it doesn't fall off, then I'm actually more happy with this result. No holes in my machine. In theory, I could take it off someday. Yeah, you know, this might be the way to go anyway. So I'm gonna print it and then I'm gonna get back with you and I'm gonna show you how it works. I'm really excited to get this video up. And so I'm gonna be staring at this printer for four and a half hours waiting for it to finish. So guys, the print ran great last night. I actually took the time pretty late last night to stick it on the machine. I wanted to put something heavy in it to see if it would make it all the way through the night before I could trust it to put the probe in there. And it worked. I did alcohol wipes and all the good stuff to make sure it stuck well. And I'm going to show you the results. I'd say that makes just about a perfect storage solution for the probe. Out of the way, I can't walk past the machine right here because that's where the control interface is. So it's really in no way possible to, to bump into it. And then also I was having kind of curiosities about how the cord management would go, but then it occurred to me if I ran the cord over the top of the machine and then had it hang down, then when I put the probe into the spindle, the cord would actually sort of be suspended and hopefully wouldn't be actually like laying across the table and everything as if it would be if it was coming up from the bottom. And so I can actually, I'm thinking about zip tying it up on top. Once I get, once I start, you know, running a probing procedure, I'll try to get the cord length adjusted just right. Because one thing to keep in mind, it's the table that moves. The spindle only goes up and down. So when the probe's in there, there's only, you know, the 10 inches or whatever of movement that ever happens with it. So pretty forgiving there. But I am just super happy with this. Looks great. Seems to work great. I, last night I was trying to pry the thing off, kind of pulling on it. And uh, I mean, it, it, it really, I mean, you're bending the metal out before it's going to want to come off. And then also uh, with the weight being this way and with the way the angle of that sticky pad, I mean, it's, I think it's going to be pretty ideal. So it kind of opens up opportunities for anything else I want to stick to this wall. And it's kind of a just unused space with the computer being right in front of it. And so who knows, maybe I'll come up with something else that needs to go up there. We'll see. Now that brings me to another point. Uh, while it was printing last night, I actually designed another little accessory for this machine that I'm going to show you right now. So here it is on my computer. Uh, you may not know what this is, but this is an air gun holster. So I have an air gun for the machine and nowhere to put it generally. And so I'm going to stick this thing on the bottom of the machine. And I actually took the liberty of printing it last night. So I'm going to show you what it looks like on the machine. So here we go. As you can see, it's out of the way as much as possible. I noticed this kind of sloped surface on the bottom would be a perfect angle for where the gun would go. And so when I walk up to the machine, I can just pull it out, use it, and I oversized it a lot. I mean, it's not really a snug fit, but it's because I didn't want to have to really t pay too much attention to like lining it up. And so it's not a super custom fit. Almost any air gun would go in there and it, it works, I think it's gonna be great. That's also VHB on there. I think it's gonna be a reliable system. And then that brings me, I'm just doing a quick little uh, tutorial and kind of walk around of how I set up the air supply. So this doesn't come with a machine. The air gun is something I bought on Amazon. 
That's a Flexzilla hose that I bought the right color to actually match the Tormach. And I think it looks really nice on here. So the air comes into the machine in the blue line. That goes to my compressor. And normally it would just go straight into this small nylon tubing that goes and controls the pneumatics on the machine. But I installed a brass T-block and this is all held up by the bracket and this, uh, this air, what's the word, regulator. And a quick disconnect so that I could change out the hose if I needed to. And if you ever do run an air nozzle on a machine like this, you are going to want a regulator because the machine needs something like 100 PSI. And I can tell you, it's like a deafening amount of air coming out of that small of a nozzle inside the machine. And so I have it cranked all the way down to like maybe 40 PSI or something like that. It's way more bearable. And so, yeah, there it is, guys. I'm really happy with that. Oh, real quick, this is the tape I used. Just a, this is a big old roll because I've used it for other things in the past. Not cheap stuff. There's literally like a million different versions of it. This is, uh, this is a good kind. And make sure you get 3M. I think that makes a difference. They're kind of the king of adhesives. But yeah. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. I really hope that you might maybe take the time to like, comment, subscribe. I mean, I am a YouTuber, so I'm obligated to say that, you know. YouTube algorithm's kind of a diabolical monster that no one fully understands, but a little bit of, uh, you know, interaction with my platform here would help me a lot. And also, make sure you leave any comments you might have in the description. And you know what? I think that's the end of this video. More knife content is coming, by the way. I lied. I also put the STLs for those two parts as downloadable links in the description of this video. I just wanted to make sure that uh, you guys could take it into your you know, CAD program, whatever you have, spin it around. Maybe you're going to adjust it, change it. Maybe you're going to do something totally different. But you know what? There they are. So enjoy.